Let's look at my worry again. It's like your opening statement that carefully worded comment. So long as in Africa we continue to do carefully worded comments on what is happening in South Africa, the speaker, sadly, this will continue to happen. The speaker, I've been a member of the Pan-African Parliament since 2012, and I've witnessed a number of it, even whilst we were in South Africa. The speaker, I've made a statement on this xenophobic attack in the South African Parliament. And the speaker, it is sad. It is sad in the Pan-African Pan Parliament in in South Africa, as a member from Ghana. And Mr. Speaker, it is very sad that our brothers and sisters from South Africa are losing focus of what we are as people. Because when you enter the South African Parliament, uh, the Pan African Parliament, Pan African Parliament, it is boldly written there one people, one voice, one nation. I am because you are and you are because I am. That is what is written there. Meaning that we are one people and we acknowledge that we depend on each other. But suddenly, Mr. Speaker, the last one that happened was in April 2015. And the parliamentarians from the various African countries that normally converge about four times in a year in mid run to deliberate issues that affect Africa. We're very, 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 very firm to the extent that some members were even suggesting that if this xenophobic attack were happening as at the 2015 one was the, about the eighth one, then we must relocate the Pan-African Parliament out of South Africa because they do not deserve to have the Pan-African Parliament where the whole of Africa and their reps meet to deliberate African issues. There were several assurances from their ministers, even messages from their president, assuring the Africans that this was an unfortunate incident and they were taking every step to make sure that the perpetrators were brought to book. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, nothing had been done to any of the attackers, even though some of them were caught on cameras, to the extent that some were being purported to be family members of some of the high-ranking officials in, in, in South Africa, and their comment videoed, yet nothing has happened. Mr. Speaker, yes, you said we should be guided, I mean, our comment should be well-guided because of diplomacy, but my worry is, for how long can we continue to do this kind of diplomacy whilst our people continue to suffer? For how long can we continue to do this kind of nice talking whilst our people continue to suffer in each other's hands? Mr. Speaker, there are so many South African businesses across Africa. In fact, the, our last checks in 2015 in the Pan-African Parliament indicated that South Africa was rather even doing more businesses across Africa than any other uh, African country, meaning that their interest in our various countries put together, the business, is so huge that in actual sense, they were riding on the back of Africans and were benefiting than the parochial thinking back home that others have come into their country to make them jobless. I mean, speaker, let me quote uh, President Mugabe when he said, how can a doctor, well-trained doctor, take the job of somebody who is just a loading boy. Mr. Speaker, I'm guided by your, 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 your wise counsel and direction that we need to be guided. But Mr. Speaker, I will beg you to suggest this. Can all Africans avoid any product from South Africa as a way of showing them that we depend on each other. Mr. Speaker, it will interest you to know, and my colleagues who are on Pan-African Parliament will tell you, since the xenophobic attack in 2015, I have never bought anything in South Africa, apart from the food and water that I drink. And I've said it in the Pan-African Parliament because that was my protest as an individual to show that I will never go to their market to buy anything, I will never spend anything apart from 
what will keep me alive. That's food and water. And Mr. Speaker, I have stuck to that up to date. Mr. Speaker, yes, we need to be diplomatic, but the only way that a blind man can see that the eye of the sighted is really red is for him to give him or her a knock. Because until you give him or her a knock, because the person is having challenges with sight, he or she will never see how red or how, how serious your face is. And I think the time has come for the African people to unite around this to at least not to violently also attack their properties in our country, not to violently attack their citizens in our country, but to boycott their products. If we begin to boycott any South African product, they will begin to feel the heat home. And that will let them know that we will not countenance it. Because, Mr. Speaker, the pain in South Africa, I remember in 2015, when we were debating this, we were reminded on how Nigerian students had to forgo their lunch and, and supper and contribute that money to fight the apartheid in South Africa. How many African countries had to put their laws aside and give their freedom fighters passport, shelter, food, and what have you, just for them to be able to get out of their difficulty. Today, in less than just 50 years, even less than 25 years, they've so soon forgotten that we were the people together standing with them and pushing to get them liberated. Now they are venting their anger on the innocent Africans who are there struggling daily. Mr. Speaker, sometimes when you visit where Ghanaians live, the Nigerians, and you see the way they work so hard in South Africa just to make their ends and be able to build those businesses, you wonder whether anybody will envy them. Because, Mr. Speaker, they really work hard. And sometimes they live in very deplorable conditions just to be able to put those small businesses. And then, just before they will say that, some group of people will just come and burn everything and send them back 10 years where they, they started. I think this is very unfortunate. Uh, by being guided by your caution, Mr. Speaker, I will urge, I will urge that our foreign minister, who has ably made this statement, to summon the South African ambassador to her office and be able to find out what is this that you keep assuring us and yet you keep doing nothing. If they were to punish the perpetrators like any other crime in South Africa, I'm sure this will come to an end. But if they continue addressing the issue and pretending that, oh, they are doing something when after since they are doing nothing, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to have this sad situation. But let me commend the foreign minister for the swiftness with which she has brought this statement and we hope that she will equally be swift in trying to get the authorities in South Africa and especially the ambassador here to come and answer to her what is happening to our dear citizens and other citizens of Africa in South Africa. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.